Okay, everybody, huge news out of Tesla land. I literally can't overstate how big of a deal this is, truly. We have a video from Austin, from 420 Bounty Hunter, fantastic name. We now have a Tesla RoboTaxi driving around without anybody in the car. I wanna make sure this plays nice so that everybody can see with their own two eyes that now in Austin, Texas, there's a Model Y, as you can see, without anybody in the car driving itself as a RoboTaxi. Again, I can't overstate how big of a deal this is. If you follow Tesla closely, you know how big of a deal this is, okay? <laughs> it's like the biggest deal of all time. But let me walk through, for those that might not be familiar with the story of why this is such a huge deal. So Tesla has been working on this technology for the better part of seven to eight years. The entire vision from the very beginning was for the company to arrive to a point where they can mass produce a car that can drive itself using just cameras, uh, an eight camera system, nine camera system now with these newer cars, and an AI computer in the car, and then an AI brain in the headquarters that essentially learns how to drive from a mass of data from the fleet of Tesla drivers that they can then use to uh, train the AI computer, and then as it gets better, they send it to the car, and then the thought process was over time, the car will just get better and better to the point where the car will just be able to drive itself. And now we're at the point where Tesla is able to build, so this Model Y that I, sh I showed you on, on the screen, this car that you're seeing right now, uh, Tesla can build for about $30,000 cost. Um, they've been building the Model Y for the better part of five, six years. It's built on the Model 3 platform. Uh, and the reason why this is such a big deal is that this vehicle, not only can they, again, it costs 30,000, but they make over a million of them per year. And now they've reached a point where a car that's mass produced, that literally anybody can go on the website and, and purchase, these cars can now drive themselves without anybody having to pay attention. If I go on Tesla's website, you can see here, so this is the Tesla Model Y, the cheapest Model Y you can purchase, uh, at the base level without doing FSD, which is the full self-driving suite. It's about 99 bucks per month or $8,000 up front. It literally, a person, anybody can purchase this Model Y in the US for $40,000. And the same exact car has the same exact hardware, literally same exact hardware and software that this car has here that's driving itself. It truly cannot be overstated how big of a deal this is. Now, if you compare this to other players like a Waymo or a Zooks or Pony, there's a bunch of different players out there that have been uh, solving self-driving. A lot of these players, let's focus on Waymo. They've been doing a phenomenal job scaling their service. Waymo is based on a much more complex hardware stack. They use things like LiDAR, radar, ultrasonics, cameras as well. They have AI built in, but they're limited to really high costs as it pertains to the vehicle, especially in relation to Tesla. Waymo says that with a partnership with their new provider, Zeker, Zeker is a Chinese vehicle maker, Waymo had to move away from Jaguar to Zeker because Jaguar stopped making the iPace, which is what all these Waymo cars have been. And now Zeker has come in and said, hey, I can actually build you the cars that you need to run your, you know, your fleet, your taxi fleet. The problem is Zeker, uh, for the next few years at least, they're gonna be capped to a 10,000 unit per year run rate, whereas Tesla is gonna be able to make uh, over, well over a million of these Model Ys, and if you include the Model 3 and the Model S and the Model X and the Cybertruck, their entire fleet, plus the Cybercap coming down the pike here in the next few months, you know, perhaps the steering wheel pedal version of that Cybercap, the Cybervan, they're working on a lot of different cars. They're eventually gonna get to a 5 million unit run rate by 2028, Tesla will. And so you compare that run rate versus like a Waymo comparison with Zeker, you can start to see that the time it took for Tesla to get to this point was worth it. And the reason why it was worth it was because now, again, it's, I just can't believe we're here, a car that they can build today for over a million units per year run rate that costs 30,000 to build, it's driving itself. It's just driving itself. It's just, it's very hard not to be excited. It's literally, it's very difficult not to be excited about this. Now, what's also interesting about this rollout from Tesla is if I ask Grok here, how long did it take Waymo, which is obviously Tesla's biggest competitor in what's going to be RoboTaxi rideshare, to go from first geofence to no supervisors in the car, it took them about three years and six months to reach, hey, we're going live in our first area to uh, nobody in the car for public rides. But what's interesting here is that Tesla has made the RoboTaxi app completely wide open for anybody to use. Now, of course, these cars are just in Austin right now, and it looks like probably gonna be a specific part of Austin of the geofence that they have. 
But RoboTaxi was released in Austin in June of this year. So if we use the same sort of measuring stick, knowing that the RoboTaxi app is completely wide open, and in theory, tomorrow, I could very well make a trip down. I'll go to downtown Austin and see if I can hail one of these cars without anybody in them. Which means that the speed at which Tesla was able to achieve unsupervised robotaxi in an area is exponentially faster than their biggest competitor. Now, the big thing here that, that you know a lot of people like to bring about uh, up about this sort of Waymo versus RoboTaxi is okay, but Waymo's already been doing a lot of rides. You know, they're doing something like two hundred fifty thousand rides per week, and you know they, they've been doing this for a long time. A hundred percent agree. They're doing a phenomenal job. They're scaling scaling very very quickly. But the difference is is that the speed of scale and Tesla's competitive advantage as it pertains to not just this technology stack but their scale as far as how many cars they can build paints a very inevitable picture, which is that Tesla is going to have probably an order of magnitude or more, 10 times or more robotaxis on the road by say, let's call it the end of 2027 versus Waymo. That's just, that's just what the math says. If you just plot out how Tesla has been performing in robotaxi and what Waymo has been able to achieve, which is extremely impressive, there's going to be a giant gap between the number of cars that Tesla is going to be able to put in operation versus Waymo. Not to discount Waymo's approach, that's just what's going to happen. <laughs> that's a technology differential. Tesla solved it with just cameras and AI, and Waymo for this whole time has been using a very complex suite of sensors. Now, over time, they'll likely try to go to just cameras, but the big battle they're going to face is who's going to build the cars for them, because they don't build the cars, they have to partner with somebody to build the cars. So. Um, and then on top of that, if you really think about the achievement that Tesla has achieved here with RoboTaxi in Austin, the same exact technology can go in driver's cars. I literally just took my, literally, like literally just took my Cybertruck, uh, I took my little one to Ikea and back, and I didn't do anything. It went from the from my driveway to the parking lot, parked itself, and then it went from the parking lot back to my house. And I didn't do anything. The system required me to pay attention, but I physically didn't do anything. And now we can see that in Austin, they are comfortable enough having cars driving around without anybody in them. And so in theory, if those cars can do that without anybody in them, they'll be able to do that with somebody in them. So what does that mean? We're very close, it looks like, at least to me, from Tesla owners, at least in the United States, maybe in parts of the country, but definitely in Austin. If you own a, t a Tesla in Austin with hardware 4, which is the latest hardware they have, you're going to get an update where you will no longer have to pay attention. That's what it seems like to me. And then you compare that advantage versus any other car maker, you have to ask yourself, why would anybody buy any other car when you can buy a Tesla that can do that? And again, it costs that Model Y, it's 40,000 to start. You have to pay for FSD on top of that, 99 per month or 8,000 up front. But why, why would you buy a RAV4 when you can buy a Model Y? Why would you buy a whatever, BMW X3, X5? What, you know what I'm saying, right? Okay, insane. We're hitting a threshold here, you guys. Like. This is a gigantic chasm, and I think if I were to guess tomorrow, not financial or investment advice, I'm going to guess the stock market reacts to this positively because proving this out means that Tesla now has the pathway to do this with every other one of their cars. So if one car can do it, their entire fleet with Hardware 4 can do it. And they have a Hardware 4 fleet, their latest hardware of millions on the road right now, and they're literally building... 2 million per year, and they're going to go to 5 million per year. They're just going to absorb the world with these driverless cars. And that same exact stack that they're using in the US is also working in Europe, is also working in Australia, okay? Because <laughs> it just knows how to drive. And that same exact stack is what they're going to use to power their human or robot, the Optimus robot, which is going to tackle labor. The next thing we're going to have to talk about once this thing starts actually propagating is the disruption to the labor force for both drivers and, and human workers. That's a can of worms that we have to talk through and we have to solve. But we'll talk about those things on this channel as well. And if you want to follow these trends very closely, go to farzat.fm. I have an exclusive community there. Sign up if you want to be part of our exclusive community. We do uh, exclusive Q&As with myself and my community every Tuesday. You get early access. You get exclusive content, all that good stuff. And we have honest conversations about where we're going because this is transformational. This is a gigantic deal. Waymo has already proved out the self-driving piece. They just don't have the scale. So Tesla's like, okay, thank you for proving that out. Here's the scale. What's gonna happen to Waymo there? If you follow this channel, you already know where I stand. So thank you so much for watching. Huge, huge, huge development. We'll continue tracking on the channel and we'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.